to do. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, it come to my attention that not many of you is actually watching my live streams. Maybe it's because of duration. Probably one hour, two hour video or find the time to join live stream. Maybe a bit much for some of you. So I decided to fix this and I will do this in a more relaxed fashion. And uh, today I'm going to start talking to you about some of the Kafka tutorials. Specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, Kafka streams. Awesome book, by the way. And uh, let's do it. My name is Viktor Gamov, and welcome to Streaming Things. I decided to start today's uh, conversation with a small tutorial that I think you might find very useful. This tutorial is all about defining the way how you can split a one stream of events into multiple streams. So recently, one of the members of uh, our community asked this question, how they can find a way, how they can split a stream of events based on certain condition. And I recalled that we already have this Kafka tutorial on the kafka-tutorials.confluent.io website. So I decided to break this down for you so you would know what is going on there. So let's get to it. Before we begin, before we start, we need to make sure that all dependencies and requirements are installed in your machine. All these tutorials are Docker-based, meaning that all software that requires to run this, Kafka, Zookeeper, KSQL DB, Scheme Registry, and some other components will ship as a part of Docker Compose file. So you need to have a Docker for desktop installed. You can go here into Docker uh, for desktop website and download this from there. How you can check if you have a right version of Docker, just go in the command line and say Docker, version and you will get uh, the version that more or less recent i see my version of docker was built in december 28 and i would like to have uh, docker compose as well docker compose and i'm have a docker compose version that ship with the docker now when we're done with docker we're moving to the next part those tutorials that i'm going to be showing to you those are based on java 8 or java 11 even though that you will be able to use Java 8 with those tutorials, I highly encourage you to update to more recent version of Java. Let's check what kind of version I do have installed. Java version. I have a Java 11 installed. I highly recommend you to use at least Java 11. Since I will be using a lot of things that builds, compiles, and runs some of the plugins, I will be using Gradle, and tutorials are based on Gradle. So we need to make sure that we have a right version of Gradle installed. Gradle version should be something around version 6. Yeah, that should be all right. That should be fine for our purposes. If you don't have this installed, I put some of the documentation and some of the links how you can install the Java, how you can install Gradle using the awesome tool called SDK Man. SDK Man is the open source tool that allows you to install different SDKs. It allows you to install not only Java SDK, it allows you to install different tools. Uh, you can find version of Java, you can find different uh, tools like uh, Ant, Gradle, um, you can install Kotlin and some other tools. Highly recommend to use this. Uh, it's boost your productivity in many, 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 many degrees. So highly recommend. So where you can find those tutorials? So we will go into this website called uh, Kafka Tutorials and I will be using today small tutorial that says split, split stream of events. So this is what we're gonna be doing today. And we need to switch to uh, Kafka Streams tab. So we will use right thing. Also, you can learn how you can do this with other technologies. You can learn how you can do this with KSQL DB. You can learn how to use this with the uh, basic Kafka API. All right, so imagine we do have a stream of events that represents appearances of certain actors and certain movies. If you follow me for a while, you know I'm a very huge movie buff and I enjoy <laughs> bringing up all sorts of movie references. In this particular case, we're gonna be talking about the appearances of certain actors in certain movies. And also we need to split this stream that might have uh, different appearances of different actors in uh, different genres. Like it can be uh, some of the Meryl Streep that can play in a drama or maybe some fantasy or some other movies or there might be Brad Pitt that can do some comedy and can be in some drama. So we want to have, take a data from one topic, one stream and uh, 
push it into multiple other streams. So let's get to it. Uh, we'll start with initializing the project and a very cool thing of this Kafka tutorial uh, website is that it has button that allows you to click and copy paste things. So I'm going into this one in my terminal and I'm creating this directory. Next thing is that I need to bring the software that I need to use today. So in this particular case, it will use a container with Zookeeper, it will use container with Kafka, it will use container with Schema Registry. So since we will have our data defined as an Avro schema, this is important. This is important, so that's why we need to use Schema Registry as well. On the Mac, I can paste my contents of my clipboard into file using command called pb paste. So if I'll show you what is happening on my Docker Compose. You will see this is what I just copied from the website. You can do anything before you're running this, your applications, you need to start all these containers. So you run this command Docker Compose, you can run this up. And after that, minus D means that it will be running in the background. So uh, things around Docker PS. So we can see the status of those containers. These containers are up and running. And I think we're good to go with our application development. So next thing is that we need to uh, configure Gradle project. So this uh, build file for Gradle already contains all dependencies. It contains everything that you need. It contains uh, correct plugins in order to transform our Avro schema into Java object, it contains dependencies, all the recent version of Kafka streams, all good stuff. So I highly recommend this uh, approach to uh, when you're building your own application, just like a lookup for this build, uh, build.gradle. So I'll just do build.gradle and now when I do gradle wrapper, I will generate this uh, small uh, library or small, small app that will allow to build this and run this application everywhere even though if you don't have a gradle. If there would be no gradle in the system where you're running, you will be able to run this and the wrapper will be able to download stuff for you. So now, once I have a wrapper, so I can switch from the, my console into something more uh, modern. So in this case, I will be using IntelliJ IDEA to continue to do some other things. But I still will be switching to terminal because it's nice, right? There would be multiple uh, different configurations for this application. Uh, we, we're gonna start with the development configuration. And after that, we transition to test uh, configuration. As a extracurriculum activity, you will be able to provide your production configuration or maybe even configure to connect it to Confluent Cloud. Let's uh, let's do this uh, uh, step by step. So we will go and create this configuration for uh, development. As you can see here, uh, we're going to be using some of the local host things. Let me copy and I will show you which uh, you can do. And pb paste to config dev.properties. And my IntelliJ already up. My development configuration will provide the name for application. It's a splitting app, bootstrap server, scheme registry that will be running inside the Docker con uh, container. I do have uh, all these events that come in into acting events topics. And after that, I have uh, three topics where I will output this data is uh, drama acting events, fantasy acting events, and some other things that will not fit into this description that we will want to do maybe split after like if we uh, wanted to. Next thing is that we go in here and uh, trying to create a definition for our schema for our event that uh, will be created in our application. So I'm going here inside SRC main Avro and creating file so in this case Acting event will contain certain fields. We will have a name, we have a title, we have a genre. All these things are important for like identifying this stream of input data. And also the same schema can be applied to other topics for simplicity of this use case. So next thing is that we run this uh, command uh, Gradle build from command line or you can run this in IntelliJ. So in the IntelliJ, there is a Gradle view where you can run this task called a build, and that would be pretty much the same. So what it will do, it will create a Java object 
based on this schema. So there is a Gradle plugin that takes the schema, put this through the Avro compiler that will speed out Java Pojo that already will be aware about serialization and deserialization technique. So that's kind of cool. So in this case, if I'll go here, generated Avro, I'll find this acting event. And as you can see, all these properties will have things around the name, uh, genre, and I can do what, what else would you have here? String name, title, and genre. So I will say name, title, and genre. So all these things here, there's some other additional information. We're not gonna touch this today, but the auto-generated object is always nice. Next thing that we need to provide the um, source code of our actual application. And uh, we're also using this copy paste thing. It's called split stream class. So if I will go to my package here, Java Confluent Developer and do Java split, split stream, copy paste. And there's a trivia for you. Name the director of the movie with the same name, split. Write down this in the comment below and let me know uh, how you like overall work of this director. So there's a couple things that I would like to show you here in this code. Couple things is, we start our application from uh, reading our properties. So we're loading these uh, properties from the file and all these properties will uh, drive the rest of the configuration of our applications. For example, once we need to create the topics, it's always a good idea to creating topic for your application yourself, especially if you're producing data and if you know any specific requirement for consuming this data. So in this particular case, we're providing this creation of the topic. We're using the Kafka admin client API here. So in this case, these topics will be created with uh, property files. And uh, as you can see, this code is written by configuration. So once you move to production environment, make sure you use correct uh, values for your partitions, for your uh, replication factors, and so forth and so on. But the most important thing here is uh, build topology. So build topology, this is where all our magic actually will happen. So this is our core of our application. This is where we're defining data flow for our application. Now, in this, we have a streams builder, we're passing some configurations, and now this is the logic that we use in order to drive this, the splitting of this event into multiple things. So we do have a builder that will create input stream from input topic, and after that, we use a method range that uh, takes a predicate, which is a function that defines yes or no, <laughs> returns yes or no in certain conditions. You should say, if our property that has a genre equals drama, we move this into drama top. If our property genre from our object equals fantasy, we will move this into fantasy top. If there is nothing like this there, we're moving this to some generic topic that we will deal later. And after that, after we did the branch, this operation, uh, we, now we need to finally actually push it. So that's why for each branches that we branch our stream, we will push this into corresponding topic. So method two is responsible for actually materializing this on the Kafka side of things. Now, in order to uh, make this application portable, we have the shadow jar that will compile this and dump all the dependencies inside our jar. So next thing is that we are running this application with development configuration. Java minus jar, our shadow jar will include all dependencies. We don't need to specify any class paths here. And we're passing development with properties. In order to, um, in order to use this, I actually have uh, another window. And uh, first of all, let me make sure my application is running and everything seems to be fine. So now I can go and try to generate some of the test data so I will see that is uh, my application working and processing this data. Um, we will using this um, Docker Compose or Docker exec method that will invoke a Kafka Avro console producer. So if you didn't have uh, these tools installed on your computer, it's fine. As long as you have a Docker, these tools available as a part of the image, you will execute this thing inside this container. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So I have this producer now where I can get the data and also Kafka tutorials got you covered. So for example, 
things around uh, with your favorite actor. Like, what's your favorite actor? Write down in the comments. Do not forget to interact with me because I would like to learn a little bit more about you and also ask the question or leave the question if something is not clear. Here, I'm using a bunch of actors here. So in this particular case, I do have a Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Hit this like button if Keanu Reeves is your favorite actor and you actually waiting for new Matrix to come out. So we use this data to test our application. So let's copy it here. So data is sent there. Now how we can check if this uh, application successfully processes it? Correct. We do have a consumer for other or other topics. So in this particular case, I'm listening topic uh, drama event. So as you can see here, if I would just do drama in here, uh, drama, I have one, two, three, and I do have a Meryl Streep, looks like I do have some leftovers from the previous run, so always <laughs> clean up your things once you're done with uh, application coding. Next thing is that how we can validate things around a around another topic. So we're gonna go here and copy paste here. So we're gonna be fantasy acting movies. Same here, I will see some bunch of stuff. Those are, again, some of the data from my previous run. So Kafka is persistent system, so some messages are retained between, you know, Kafka restarts. So that's also fine. The last thing is that let's validate if we do have some data in our topic that has other events, all right? Click here and we should see some bunch of stuff. Yes, so we do have a genre comedy, crime. So that's what we have. That you see just like how you can develop this application, you can tinkering with data, you can look around the things and see how the things will actually turn out. Now, but sometimes when you are developing, it's not very convenient. You need to have a Kafka running, you need to have all these tools running. What is available in Kafka Streams to test? Topology Test Driver is a fantastic tool that is a part of uh, Kafka Streams. It's a built-in uh, library that allows you to write the test that won't require any Kafka, any other components, no Zookeeper, no Scheme Registry, nothing. I will show you how you can use this one here. So we're going into test configuration. So I'll just do um, uh, paste in a configuration test and let's look on the test configuration how this will be different from our development configuration so i will just do this and just do compare for you as you can see there is not much of the change however there is a very special url for scheme registry so scheme registry a specific our serializer that uses scheme registry client will recognize this special type of url so in this case it will not call actual scheme registry it will not go and call the rest service it will just uh, make it appear like it calling it and returning some result that application code expects. Rest of the things exactly the same as we have for development. So the next thing is that we need to write the test. So for that matter, I will just go ahead and create the test. Yes, and we're gonna be using JUnit4, just okay. And after that, the test example also will be here. So copy, paste, format, and you golden. Now, let's take a look what do we have here. So open up this structure, so we see here a couple of things. So test splitter stream. We do use the same configuration for the test. So in this case, we're gonna be using these guys. Next thing that we're building topology, and this time this topology comes from our production code. And uh, to demonstrate some of the interesting things, how you can also see what is going on in your application. Let's modify this code. So let's go here instead of this build, just do uh, creating the variable. Uh, we will call it uh, topology. I can do and do topology dot describe dot to string. So in this case, I will be able to get a textual representation of our topology. So this data flow that my application is doing, so I will be able to use web service called Kafka Streams Topology Visualizer that allows me to see a representation of my application flow. It's really cool, you should use it. I will show you in a second. So once I'm done here, so I'm going here and run this Gradle uh, test. Test execute it super fast because it will not require any actual software. It will run this inside this mock uh, topology test driver. So I can do this topology. And now 
that's my topology. I'm copying from here to here. I'm going to this uh, website called Kafka Streams Topology Test Driver. And now we do have representation of our application. So our input data goes into acting events. There would be Kafka Streams source node will be created. Next thing that we will be executing this branch operation and this branch operation will be able to send this data into corresponding topics. So that's what we see here, drama, fantasy and other events here. That's a really nice thing uh, to have in order to figure out what is what is your application is doing, right? So once we run this test, we run this test, we're getting some results and we are done. Once you're done with your development, you want to put your application in production. This production can be whatever you want because Kafka Streams can run in operating system, in bare metal, it can run in containers and many, many other things. If you're interested in learning more about the running this stuff in production, I highly recommend you to check out some of the live streams that I did. Uh, so that's why you need to go and check this live streams uh, playlist and Confluent YouTube channel. You can find the description below. That would be it for today. So let me know how you like this better, this format of uh, tutorials. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, enable notifications so you will be able to get all new things from, uh, from my channel about uh, Kafka stream processing and the cloud. My name is Victor Gamov and as always, have a nice day.